Bringing unity to the community. 89.9 KMOJ. The People's Station. It's 89.9 KMOJ. Today's R&B and throwbacks. I'm Glam Life Kim, and right now it's 2 after the 1 o'clock hour. And on the phone line, I have one of my favoriteest people in the Twin Cities, Mr. Anthony Taylor. How are you today, bro? I am feeling blessed today, my sister. You are one of my favoriteest of all time, favoriteest people Yay. as well. We can start making like some T-shirts or something like right. that with some, with some arrows. You know, how, right. you know how they used to do back in the day? <laughs> right. My favoriteest with the arrow. <laughs> my favoriteest of favoriteest, uh, sister. It is always good to uh, hear your voice. Uh, we were not... Uh, on the show uh, last week, uh, Minneapolis. And first of all, just let me back up. I am blessed to be here as always to uh, host this show with Glam Life Kim. This is Minneapolis 360. I am your host, Anthony Taylor, African-American community specialist for the city of Minneapolis. Uh, we are back, and I think we kind of talked about this a couple of weeks ago. We're back now to every second and fourth Wednesday at one o'clock since we went weekly for two months. So uh, that's why I, I felt some kind of way. My, my brother Glenn didn't give us the intro, Kim. And, you know, he jumped back on. So now I'm all right. I'm out of my feelings yeah, yeah, now. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, I, I was in him for a little bit, but but now I'm I'm out. So and then when confused. I get a chance to just to, to, to host with you and, to be able to give uh, information to uh, Minneapolis on a beautiful, beautiful spring day. Yes, it's uh, gorgeous. I, it, it's gorgeous outside, Kim. And, mm-hmm. and uh, one of the things that I think that that uh, I miss and a lot of other people miss is just the, the really the personal interaction. So uh, yeah. being able to do it remotely is a little bit different. Right, right. But I, I still think it's effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Welcome, uh, Minneapolis. I want to get to to talking a little bit today about the show. I think it's been a little bit over a week since Governor Waltz announced some rollbacks on restrictions that has been in place for over a year almost. And I want to kind of dig deep into that and, and what that really means Minneapolis. And I know a lot of us got that information last week and, and some of us may be really in tuned uh, with the depth of what that means. Some of us maybe don't really kind of understand what does rolling back restrictions mean. Uh, and I'm going to get into that with, with one of my favorite people uh, of all time that I work with that I know personally to kind of talk about it. But what I want people to kind of understand about this show is the fact that Things may change. In fact, things will change uh, once these restrictions roll back. And and it's something I think that's definitely uh, we have to kind of take notice of because uh, and I won't get into the content because I want my content matter expert, April Graves, to talk about it. But things are, are changing. Right. And I think a lot of us didn't know when the light in the end of the tunnel would happen. Uh, We had a lot of shows. We talked a lot about vaccinations, gave people the options, gave people the information to make really informed decisions on what vaccinating you or your family looks like. One of the things that Governor Walsh announced last week is the fact that uh, Minnesota has been making huge progress in the fight against COVID-19. And and some of the information out there in Minneapolis is that 70 percent of all Minnesotas, Minnesotans are on track to be vaccinated by the end of June. So dig deeper into the number, Minneapolis, is 2.6 Minnesotans or 60 percent of the state's population has received at least one shot of all three vaccines that are out there. Again, it's the Moderna, the Pfizer, and Sorry just recently the Johnson April. Johnson. I can't hear Anthony. Close to 80 percent of Minnesotan seniors 65 and up has gotten at least one shot of the vaccine. So there's a lot of progress in that. And that's one of the reasons the governor had uh, talked about the rolling back of restrictions is the fact that the progress that this state has made with folks getting vaccinated will allow things to reopen capacity in, in, in different indoor places to increase. And I think one of the biggest things that the governor announced is the fact that the possibility that the mass mandate 
will be over. I'm, I'm going to pass the mic to, to this person to kind of talk about it because she is definitely one of the, the, the biggest uh, expert in this field. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you know her. It's April Graves uh, from the city of Minneapolis Health Department. She's been on our show many times. Has dropped a lot of mic drops on this show. And I want to welcome her back to the show again today. April, it is always good to hear your voice, sister. Welcome to the show. And how you doing today? Hey, Anthony, it's always a pleasure to be here and to hear your voice, too. I miss you. <laughs> you, you know, April, I, I, I miss you as well. And, and, and in fact, we tech semi uh, uh, often and not as much as we used to because we were doing a lot of work with the COVID. But one of the things, and, and I always like to give my guests their roses, you are one of the smartest, dopest sisters that I know. And to have your presence on this show is a blessing for, for me and the city. So thank you again, sister, for being a part of this. And for those of, 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 of us or you don't know what you do, April, just kind of tell Minneapolis, you know, what do you do for the health department? Thank you, Anthony. I, I work as a violence prevention associate within the Office of Violence Prevention within the Minneapolis Health Department, and most of my work focuses on uh, youth violence prevention and teen dating violence prevention. So there's a couple different programs and initiatives that I work with the community and um, organizations within the north side as well as the public schools on. Um, but I'm also part of some of the larger work within the Office of Violence Prevention as well and um, make sure that I try to include, you know, healing, mindfulness, yoga type of techniques within the work that I do because I'm also a yoga instructor. And, and April, I mean, listen, you got so many hats, man. It, it, it's, it's bananas. You're one of the most busiest sisters I know. And plus with your work with the with the Brooklyn Center City Council, uh, Minneapolis, I mean, this is a blessing that we have this, 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 this queen on the show uh, today. Um, so, April, listen... A lot of talk about the governor and his uh, decision to take steps on the kind of roll back the restrictions uh, that could take place with all the COVID uh, restrictions that happens. Just talk to us about this plan that the governor announced last week. What are some of the, the steps that, that he had talked about and explain that to our listeners today? Absolutely. Yeah. So I know a lot of us are, are anxious for some semblance of, of normal to come back and to be able to see our loved ones and our friends. Um, so last week, the governor released his timeline to end nearly all of the Minnesota COVID-19 restrictions by May 28th, and then also end the statewide mask requirement by July 1st. So he sort of outlined this process in three steps. Um, Step one took place last Friday, May 7th, and it removed limits for outdoor dining as well as ended the mask requirement when you're outside unless you're in a very large crowd, like of more than 500 people at an event. Step two is on May 28th, and it sees an end to all the capacity and distancing limits, including indoors. So people will still need to wear their face coverings indoors and also at large events that are outdoors, again, with more than 500 people. Step three will happen when 70% of Minnesotans uh, 16 and older have had at least one dose of the vaccine, or July 1st at the latest. That's when the remaining face coverings um, for the state requirement ends. And the state has really emphasized that local governments and businesses may still require masks and have other requirements beyond July 1st. So this is just the end of the statewide mandate from the governor, uh, but other businesses may decide to still use some of these other requirements even beyond that date. So you'll have to sort of um, talk to those particular businesses and, and, and understand that before you attend them. There's also some additional state protections that will remain, including the eviction moratorium, a ban on price gouging, and eligibility exceptions for people who receive state services. And, and April, I'm glad you talked about different local ordinances. Ordinances, I, don't even, I, I said that word wrong, but you know what I meant. Minneapolis, <laughs> you know what I meant too. Uh, what, what's the status of Minneapolis's status on the mask ordinance? Because you talked about different uh, local uh, governments. Talk about Minneapolis and where we stand in, as far as the, the mask mandate. Yeah, I think, you know, it's important that, that cities also think about it, like just within their own jurisdictions, um, because not every jurisdiction within the state of Minnesota has the same needs. So Minneapolis was the first jurisdiction in the state to issue an indoor mask policy. 
Uh, the city of Minneapolis executive order required that any individual over the age of two and able to medically tolerate a face covering to cover their nose and mouth with a mask uh, or face covering indoor spaces of public accommodation in the city. So that included places like grocery stores, restaurants, coffee shops, cafes, uh, religious gathering spaces, community centers, shopping malls, government institutions, and other public indoor locations. Um, the mayor is in close contact with the Minneapolis Health Department, and he'll continue to weigh the public health data to determine when it will lift the restrictions specifically in Minneapolis. So watch for the City of Minneapolis news in the coming weeks and check with the businesses that you may frequent before you go. We are with April Graves from the Minneapolis Health Department. If you have any questions for April, please call 612-377-3456. We would love to hear from you if you have any questions about the news that Governor Waltz is lifting uh, some of the restrictions that have been in place for a year now in Minneapolis. And, and one of the things to Minneapolis is the fact and what I talked about when we, I first started the show is this the progress with the vaccinations that we have uh, is, have really increased uh, our level of productivity in that. So when we talk about the vaccines, April, and if there's a goal to have 70 percent of Minnesota's 16 years and older vaccinated by July 1st, that that's that's huge. Right. That's big. So what can folks do to kind of get to that goal, April? Well, the first thing that you can do if if you have not been vaccinated yet and you would like to be vaccinated is go to the vaccineconnector.mn.gov and fill out the online form. After that, you'll be notified, <clears throat> excuse me, once a vaccination appointment is available. The Vaccine Connector website is in multiple languages. And if you're looking for a vaccine information, the city of Minneapolis also has a web page specifically for that. So you can know what to expect when you get the vaccine and to find out where to go to get it, you can go to minneapolismn.gov slash coronavirus slash vaccines. At uh, Minneapolis clinics, there's many places that you can actually walk in or register. Um, there's several different places where you, you don't need to make an appointment. No health insurance or ID is required. Um, they encourage family groups to come together. And adults 18 and older um, are definitely being vaccinated. We expect to have um, some more of the Pfizer vaccines at the Minneapolis clinic soon, and then we'll be able to vaccinate more youth. We are talking April Graves, Minneapolis Health Department, regarding the uh, loosening of a lot of different restrictions uh, that are going to take place here in the next couple, couple coming weeks. Uh, and, and one of the, the things that I think is important to April, and, I, and I'll ask you this question after I, I say this, is the fact that now we're talking about children being able to get the possibility of, of getting vaccine soon. And, and one of the things that I talked about earlier was the fact that there's a lot of decisions to make. A, we're in the summertime. Uh, B, the fact that folks are going on vacations or holidays or birthdays or family reunions, a lot of the things that got canceled uh, last year and also to the upcoming school year. So when, when, when folks are having these decisions about their children and, and, and vaccinations, tell us a little bit something about the, the news that it is possible that our babies could be getting vaccination shots here soon, April. Absolutely. So up until now, there's been three vaccines available, and they could only be given to adults and, like, older teens. Uh, but that peer, appears to be getting ready to change. Um, on Monday, the Food and Drug Administration authorized the use of the Pfizer vaccine for people aged 12 to 15. And the CDC Vaccine Advisory Committee is scheduled to make a recommendation soon that would recommend making the vaccine widely available to 12 to 15-year-olds as early as this week. Expanding this eligibility of vaccines to people within the 12 to 15 age would expand the pool of eligible recipients to about 87% of the nation's total population. And that is that's that's huge. Right. And, and April, just mm -hmm. just uh, talk. And I, and I guess this this personally, like like how 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 can one and I don't necessarily talking about you, but just how important it is for folks to just really understand this information about our children, because we protect our babies 
with, at all costs, right? And the last thing that we want to do is, is to have put our babies in harm's way. So just talk about the significance of this information, at least, that folks can kind of do their homework and understand it uh, for the possibilities that there may be requirements down the road for these vaccinations. And again, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying there's a lot of possibilities. But April, just kind of share the importance of knowing that this is possibly available for for your babies uh, coming up here soon. You know, I'm weighing these same things myself, Anthony. I, I have um, four children. My son that's 24 has actually took it upon himself to go ahead and get himself vaccinated already. Um, but my 20-year-old still has not gotten a vaccine. I'm trying to give him some agency in deciding when and if that's right for him because he is an adult, um, even though he's still my baby and he lives in the house. Uh, but my two other children are 11 and 13, um, and they've been still continuing to do distance learning for the rest of the school year. So I'm thinking very much about, um, you know, if I'm re- if I want to get them in there to get vaccinated, I I think I will definitely before they go back to in person school next year. Um, but I'm definitely weighing, you know, the pros and cons myself. Um, I decided to get vaccinated. My mom has been vaccinated, my dad. So I I have a few people within my family that were more sort of at risk for adverse side effects if they had caught the virus that had already been vaccinated. I also know a couple young people that were vaccinated a little bit earlier on because they had some of those other pre-existing conditions that kind of put them at higher risk of complications should they contract the virus. So, you know, I'm doing my research. Um, I'm talking to other people that may have already had their young people get vaccinated. Um, And I think, you know, really, ultimately, it's a personal decision that every family is going to have to come to. But I do think that uh, the more of us that get vaccinated and are not able to get as sick and be transferring it as easily, uh, the better off we're all going to be. Although I thoroughly respect everybody's decision to do what they feel is right for them. Absolutely. And and Kim, I want to bring you into the conversation, kind of the same question that I asked April, right? Just knowing that the fact that that this is something that could possibly be available for for the for the babies, just how important to know that you have that option, right, to to have the shot or not, knowing that that this summer and actually the rest of of this year and and going forward uh, is going to change for a lot of people. Yeah, I already mm-hmm. I asked my baby. <laughs> look, <laughs> while she was just talking, I sent my baby a text like, "Let's go get vaccinated together." <laughs> 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 it's serious. Um, I'm. I think you know. Hey, at the end of the day, we have they have to get vaccinated with the measles. <laughs> you know what? It, uh, HPV. I mean, there's so many different vaccinations, like even for kids to go to school, you know, that we are just required to get. So I just feel like this is going to be one of those that at some point, you know, hopefully or, you know, at some point, maybe everybody will be required to get it. So it to me, it doesn't hurt. I mean, the chances of you not dying from COVID, you know, compared to you, you know, risking your life. it I, I'll take that chance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, there's sure. always. There's always, you know, uh, people that choose not to vaccinate their kids. I mean, I do believe that there are some ways that people can, you know, um, object. Mm -hmm. I don't remember exactly what the forum is called, but I know that there are people that object either on religious or or other kinds of grounds and -hmm. and don't get their kids vaccinated for for other kinds of diseases as well. Okay. You know, I I I know that, you know, in my experience I I just kind of went off what did I get? You mm-hmm. know what I mean when I was a kid mm-hmm. and I was okay and didn't get <laughs> measles or didn't get this and that and so that's kind of the yeah. the way that I've moved forward with my own children, but that was my um, and and then in this situation I was like, okay, I'll I'll kind of test it out myself, you know, and then as more people that I know um, and, and then also getting the, the scientific evidence and, and knowing as a, a public health official sort of the process of approval and how many different layers they have to go through, um, I felt more comfortable going ahead and doing it. But it is, you know, it's anything Decision. unknown is scary. Right. right. Yeah, absolutely. And that's absolutely true. And, and, and one of the things that I'm happy about, because this is definitely a personal decision. And, and mm-hmm. April, you shared your story about your vaccination story. I shared my story about the vaccination story in Minneapolis. This is just to give you multiple perspectives on your decision, right? So there's no one on this show and and myself or the city of Minneapolis included 
who are encouraging folks to get vaccinated, right? right? So it's just, I, I love the fact that folks come on our show and they share their experience to help folks get a better understanding of the different perspectives out there. Because like I've said many times before, and we've had this show on vaccination, there is no right or wrong Mm-mm. answer in Minneapolis. The fact that there's something available for our babies, I think is something for folks to be able to kind of get that information. April talk said it best. She said she did her homework and she understood right. that Kim talked about uh, her decisions that she's making for her and, and, and her daughter. So again, Minneapolis, this is kind of where I, I want to make sure that we understand where this conversation is going. We're here with April Graves, Minneapolis. We've got a, a, a few minutes left with April. If you have a call, please call in to ask April or a question if you have for April. Please call in 612-377-3456 as we wrap up the show. Uh, here with April Graves, uh, MVP of the Minneapolis 360 show, MVP of the Minneapolis Health Department. Uh, I'm glad we brought her really, back because they did get cut short. What was that, a couple weeks ago? So I'm so glad it we did. were able to bring, yeah, to bring her back. And- Absolutely. And April, as we wrap up with you, uh, there's a lot of uh, vaccination sites uh, at the Minnesota stair, uh, fairgrounds. Kind of what's the latest on that uh, at the sites at the fairgrounds? Yeah, so uh, the state has been running the community vaccination clinic at the fairgrounds with some federal support. Right now the fairground site is um, only giving second doses of Pfizer. So if you haven't gotten your first dose there, you shouldn't go there right now. But starting May 26th, the fairground vaccination site will offer the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. So the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is just one shot. So if you haven't gotten any COVID-19 vaccination up to date, um, that's a good place to go to just be one and done. Um, so, you know, I may decide if my son decides he wants to go get it, I'll probably bring him there. So then I don't have to worry about going, bringing him back or scheduling that second appointment there's also no cost and the minnesotans don't need to provide any kind of id or medical insurance to be vaccinated scheduling for the johnson johnson vaccine at the fairgrounds begins the week a week from today on may 19th so next wednesday on that date you'll be able to register at mn you'll be able to register at mn.gov slash COVID-19 slash vaccine or by calling the Minnesota Department of Health COVID-19 public health hotline at 1-833-431-2053 from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Saturday. That is great information. And and again, uh, just before you uh, before you go, April, just kind of give folks that, that uh, Vaccine Connector website that they can go to yet as well. Sure, I can do that. Um, the Minnesota, did you mean the Minneapolis one or the Minnesota Yes, Minneapolis. One? I'm sorry, April. Yep. <laughs> okay. So uh, to get more info on the vaccinations, you can go to MinneapolisMN.gov slash coronavirus slash vaccines. April, it's always uh, great to have you on. I appreciate you coming on. I know how busy you are to talk about these uh, restrictions that are are loosening and how folks can get informed. Uh, Is there any last words you want to leave to the folks as we uh, end our conversation today? Um, Just a couple more things specific to the governor's peacetime emergency during the pandemic. So that extension keeps the peacetime emergency in place until this Friday, May 14th. Um, The governor has already extended this emergency many times. As long as it's extended, it keeps the suspension of evictions and landlord-initiated lease terminations in place. So this suspension makes it possible for households to remain sheltered during this peacetime emergency. While this executive order helps thousands remain sheltered during the peacetime emergency, it does not relieve the obligation of tenants to pay rent. So if you can pay your rent, you need to keep doing so. But the state of Minnesota will also offer some emergency rental assistance, utility assistance, and other housing costs. So you can call 211 or check renthelpmn.org for help around rental assistance. And also Hennepin County offers emergency assistance to help with rental as well. So you can go to hennepin.us slash rent dash help or call 
3160 to apply. They can give you help with the application in other languages. You can leave a message and someone will call you back at your request in your requested language. The suspension of evictions does not include eviction actions based on cases where the tenant seriously endangered the safety of other residents or where the tenant seriously endangered the safety of others on the premises. So I just thought giving that additional context and information around um, rental assistance and housing would also be helpful as we continue to think about um, the lifting of these restrictions, although uh, the emergency peacetime emergency in place does still uh, keep keep the suspensions of evictions and landlord-initiated lease terminations in place as of yet. Yep, and I'm glad you said that, April, because we had uh, someone on the show a couple weeks ago to talk specifically about that. So I'm actually glad that you you told that to people. Um, I do have one last question for April. Absolutely, sister. And I know this is personal. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Which vaccination did you take? I got the Moderna vaccine. Okay. And how did you have any... um, reactions and how did how did things go for you um well i'm 40 years old and okay. so the first shot i just had kind of like a sore arm okay but when i went back for the second shot i did get after about eight hours i did get a fever i didn't take any medicine because i really wanted to just see how my body would react mm-hmm. and so you know i got cold and i had a fever um and just felt like you know really fatigued and low energy but by about That probably only lasted for about six hours, and so probably about 24 hours after I had gotten the shot, Mm -hmm. I was pretty back to normal. Awesome. And it's also been my understanding that um, you're more likely to kind of see some of those other little side effects um, if you're younger than if you're older. So, like, when my mom went and got her second shot, she didn't really have anything but a a sore arm. Okay. Same with my dad. Okay. Wow. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, yeah, no April, problem. Yeah, Thanks you, for having me. And, you, you, and, you, and I appreciate you always being able to share personal stories. Sister, I, I, I miss you, and I, I wish you all the best. Be well, and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you for coming again, yeah. April. Thanks. Thank you, Anthony. Let me know when you spark up that grill. I'm going to come. <laughs> oh, it's, it's already going down. You're the first person I'm inviting, my sister. <laughs> okay, me second. All right, thanks, is April. Already sealed. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That was April Graves, uh, Minneapolis. She has been on the show many times from the health department uh, talking about the restrictions, uh, some of the information on how to get vaccinated, some of the things that are going on in the fairground where folks can get tested. We're we're short on time, Minneapolis, but I want to say just a, a quick couple things, and this show always goes pretty fast. And I just want to put this in the, in the space, Minneapolis, and, and, and have you kind of think about this. We understand that the governor is loosening these restrictions, right? So we all know what April told us about the restrictions with the restaurants and and all of those limited capacity stuff is going to be over soon. The mask mandate is going to be over soon. A lot of these restrictions are going to be over soon. And the reason that I say that is, listen, this peacetime emergency Minneapolis will be over soon. Right. And I don't have any information. If I did, I would tell you. But just the law of averages tell you that if other things are, are, are loosening up and eliminating, this is also something that is probably going to be eliminated as well. So I say that to tell you that the renthelpmn.org is the place for you to go for you to get rent assistance. Remember, Minneapolis, a couple of weeks ago, we had a guest on that said that this Uh, funds can be able to pay up to 15 months of rent. So talking about your back rent plus three months ahead, Minneapolis. So listen to what I'm trying to tell you. Listen to the information. Mm -hmm. This will probably end soon. Mm -hmm. What'd you say, Kim? I said, yeah, make sure they tell a friend. (laughs) Tell a friend, tell family, Mm -hmm. renthelpmn.org. Please go on there. I've forwarded this uh, link to a lot of people. And a lot of other people need to afford it to somebody else. So, I, again, I wanted to make sure that we knew that, Minneapolis. Kim, it's always good to hear your voice. It's always, always a pleasure. good to ride shotgun with your sister. I appreciate you. Keep You are doing a great job, and we appreciate having you. I, I love it, Minneapolis. Be safe. Be well. I will see you on the 26th. God bless. God bless. All right, kings and queens. Up next is Zany K. It's a vibe, y'all, on 89.9 KMOJ.